My name is Timothy Moore. I'm the website manager at BART, uh, Bay Area Rapid Transit District. Uh, BART is a uh, uh, regional metro rail system, much like the metro in uh, Montreal there. And um, uh, what I do is I manage BART's internet presence, our websites, our mobile initiatives, uh, our messaging initiatives like SMS and uh, email, our social engagement practice, and also BART's open data initiatives. Um, which I'm going to talk about today. Uh, first of all, I, I also want to talk about, um, I apologize for not speaking uh, French to you today. Um, I had a chance to visit Montreal uh, last year, and I, I love that city, and I love the people. I wish I was there with you today. Um, the start of sharing. Uh, what I'd like to try to do is kind of plot uh, the path for BART on how we arrived at our open data initiatives to try to give you some insight on how you could possibly work with transit agencies and work with other governmental agencies to pull this data out so that it can be used in uh, some of the initiatives like Nick was talking about earlier. Um, for us, the whole concept of sharing data really started back in 1998. Uh, a couple of computer science uh, students from UC Berkeley had this idea. They wanted to start a website that grouped all of the transit information throughout the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, San Francisco is unique, the Bay Area is unique in that there are 25 different transit agencies. This was not an initiative that we were going to take on uh, at BART, and so we gave our data to them so that they could perform this for us. Um, we thought it was a great uh, value proposition, and we never gave them any um, you know, developer license or anything like that. We just thought it was a good idea. Next slide, please. Um, while this early sharing was occurring, um, we were also doing some other things. Uh, we were creating tools for people to use BART data, to bring data to their desktops uh, in the forms of a, a widget, to bring data and embed it on their blog or embed it in their, on their website um, in the form of a little include. Um, we also had this thing called, uh, actually we currently do now, called do-it-yourself displays. It was just a very simple way for people to display BART departures in a cafe that was near a BART exit, uh, near a, in a building lobby that was near a BART station. Uh, so, so basically, you see, we were firmly entrenched on the solutions side, trying to solve uh, specific use cases, uh, but also you know, trying to get this data out there. Um, and so as we were doing this, some standards came along. Um, next slide, please. And the shift to standards was really a, kind of a, a, a monumental shift for us in our, our approach as well. With RSS, really simple syndication, we started to see the possibilities. You know, we were syndicating delay advisories and um, elevator status and stuff like that. But with uh, GTFS, or the General Transit Feed Specification, which Nick mentioned earlier, um, we really saw some opportunity. Um, GTFS, uh, General Transit Feed Specification, was a standard sort of uh, that was developed by Google uh, in concert with a company called TriMet in Portland, Oregon. They're a transit operator in Portland, Oregon. Um, and BART was the first agency to embrace the standard uh, for release uh, of data to third-party developers. Actually, we were the first agency other than TriMet who pretty much invented it. So um, this was the first time that we really tried to deal with the license issue head on. Um, and if you could take me to the next slide, I'll show you. Given our experience, I think, with uh, third parties using BART data in the beginning, um, we didn't even really see the need for a, a data license to begin with, quite frankly. Um, just everything had gone fine. We were sharing data, and there was really no problem. Um, in fact, we saw that TriMet was doing a license, and we thought, mm, okay, I think the key thing on the data license is that it's got to be the most open, the most simple, the shortest thing possible. Um, we had some great attorneys we were working with here, and our license is a great model, I think, that can be used in a lot of different places. A lot of transit agencies in the United States are using it, in fact. It's short, it's sweet. We, we really try to remove as many hurdles as possible between the data and developer use of the data. And then after this came out, it was off to the races. Uh, next slide, please. In 2008, we turned out our real-time arrival feed. 
Uh, there wasn't really a standard for real-time data. And just to give you a sense of how quickly things are moving in this space, uh, we're not even really supporting this feed anymore. Uh, well, we're supporting it as a legacy platform, really, because there are other ways of giving, getting this data out to developers that are a little bit more effective. And I'll talk about those uh, next. Next slide, please. Um, in 2010, we made the decision to turn out the API and an API of literally everything that's used on BART.gov. So we're talking about our trip planner, uh, our scheduling, uh, schedule static, uh, real-time arrivals, real-time departures, delay advisories, elevator advisories, geolocation information on stations, everything that we had, uh, we put it into this API. And that's really the, the place now that we're encouraging developers to go to. They can make better calls, more granular. Um, and the key thing about this is that there was really an incremental cost for us to expose this. This is the system that we're using ourselves on BART.gov. So we're eating our own dog food, uh, as, to borrow a phrase. We're sharing um, these resources, and the costs to provide them to developers is not really that great. Next slide, please. Um, geospatial data, I just wanted to touch on this. It's a, another great way to provide um, information, more information about station locations. And uh, this was something we just were able to get on uh, last year or this year. Next slide, please. Um, and this is something I want to talk about also. We talked a little bit about GTFS or the general transit feed specification for static schedules. Um, this year, in a international partnership with Google um, and Boston Transit, Transit from Madrid, from Portland, from San Diego and Torino, Italy, um, BART released uh, what's called GTFS Real-Time. Uh, it's essentially the complementary standard for the static scheduling, but it's a way to describe real-time arrivals, real-time departures, delay advisories, all of those things that are happening uh, in the moment. And what's great about this is it's uh, using a, a standard kind of called, called protobuf, which is really light XML. It's language neutral, platform neutral, extensible. Um, it's really effective uh, at communicating large amounts of serializing, you know, large amounts of real-time data. Um, so using the standard and working together with the static scheduling on the GTFS side, there's some really, really powerful opportunities there for third-party developers and Google itself, which is uh, using this uh, feed now um, for BART, which you can see on Google Transit. Next slide, please. Let's, we'll talk about results really quickly. Um, at BART, we have about four dozen apps, and these are apps on every platform you can think of and many that you probably wouldn't have developed for yourself. Uh, we have about 1,500 developers subscribed to our developer list right now, uh, 172 registered API keys. And again, this is an optional thing. We don't need to know who you are. Uh, we don't need you to uh, register for a key. Um, we, you know, we're, we're not uh, going to try to, we're trying to remove as many hurdles as possible. And again, no additional budget really. All of this is happening within the current scope of the website. Uh, next slide, please. Actually, yeah, so reaction was um, great, uh, but I want to move on actually to the, the next slide so we can talk a little bit more about um, encouraging these developer communities. I think the key thing that I'm starting to see with people who release data, agencies and government organizations that release data is that they release it and nothing is happening after that. And so what I wanted to try to focus on a little bit is how you encourage, how you develop this developer community um, it's an economic ecosystem almost where BART and developers and customers are working together. And in the next few slides, I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, promotion, that should be the next slide. I'm not sure if you're seeing it. Um, yeah, next slide after this. Uh, the first thing we had to do was actually promote the open data services themselves, make sure that uh, developers knew about them. But the other thing we wanted to try to do was promote the uh, applications that developers were creating so that we could create kind of a virtuous circle that our customers understood what was going on, our developers understood that they could get some exposure if they created an app, 
uh, that was really the first thing we wanted to do. And every chance we get where we have free advertising on our platform signs, on our, um, on our emails that we send out in the footer, we're trying to promote these services as much as possible. Uh, next slide, please. This, the second thing we did was about kind of position on the website. Um, we brought our data services front and center and put them in the most highly trafficked section of the site. We wanted to bring them out into the sunlight so that developers saw them in their natural course of planning services for BART and customers understood that we offered these services and that developed third parties were creating these solutions. Um, a lot, of, a lot of agencies will kind of marginalize their data services, put them off in the corner in Siberia somewhere, and we were really trying to bring them out into the light to make sure everybody knew what was going on. Uh, next slide, please. The next, the next piece we did was ar around research. Uh, I, I saw developers creating solutions that maybe were like, you know, solutions for problems that didn't exist. And what I wanted to do was put Res uh, put the research in place so that developers could be in touch with the use cases that customers wanted to be solved. So we went out and did some research with our customers, asked them stuff like, what platform are you using right now? What mobile platform? Are you planning to make a purchase decision in the next six months? If so, what are you going to buy? Just all of the nuts and bolts that you need as a developer to make more informed decisions about the kinds of apps that you're creating. So we gave all of that, the verbatims, all of the retur returns from that research back to the developer community so that they could be smarter in the development strategies that they undertook. Uh, next slide. I'll, I know I'm uh, a little bit over, but I'm going to try to wrap this up. Um, community. And this is the thing that, if I, can, if I can focus on anything, this is the thing that I would encourage the most, just starting these discussions with developers um, generating those ideas and, and getting, getting everything moving. Um, this, uh, Nick talked a little bit about some of these hackathons and there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, in San Francisco, uh, they found that uh, kind of riding the coattails of a politician, reading him in and getting him excited about it was a great way to uh, bring the initiatives forward. Um, I think there's a, a lot of ways to do this, but the key thing is to create that dialogue and to create that understanding. Um, next slide, final slide. I know I'm a little bit over here. I charted that uh, mind shift from solutions or tools to data. Um, I just reinforce once again that dumping data out there is not the way to go. You need to have these developer support services. Um, and one other key thing I want to mention, last year BART, the BART website was uh, given this award from a, a trade organization like the American Passenger Transport Association. And it was called the, the best transit agency website in the nation. And I would tell you without qualification that this engagement with developers, all of the, all of the ideas and things that I got from them uh, helped to make that site what it, what it is today. And uh, it's all in the end about serving customers, creating better solutions for them competing in that space to see who can serve customers best. And that's really what we're trying to do. Uh, thanks very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you.